Gentlelady's recognized. I think before I begin to comment on uh, the discussion here that it is important to remind all of us that the president abuses power and is a continuing threat not only to democracy but to our national security. Uh, we do not take this lightly. We take it very seriously. And I, I beg to differ with my dear friend as one who was here for uh, the impeachment uh, proceedings in 1998 along with my colleagues. Uh, both Mr. Sinsenbrenner and Mr. Chabot, Mr. Nadler, Ms. Loughran. Let me be very clear of the distinctive difference that we had then at that time. For the American people, the special prosecutor is, it was an independent statute that allowed both Mr. Jaworski during the Nixon impeachment proceedings and then Mr. Starr to have an independent process of investigation the Congress was not privy to any of that investigation at all. Uh, they proceeded. Uh, they were not interfered with, as Mr. Mueller was, by the DOJ because he was an employee of the Department of Justice. And his employer, his boss, came out and characterized his report before he could even discuss it. In the instance of the proceedings of 1998, the Congress received a report just as both our friends on the other side of the aisle and we, in the majority, received reports from the impeachment inquiry committees who were investigatory committees. They did their work, yes, in a uh, classified setting, as I imagine both Mr. Um, Starr and Mr. Jaworski had to do in certain instances. They were like prosecutors. They had witnesses that were not in the public. And then, of course, there were full public hearings, 17 witnesses, first-hand witnesses who heard the call and testified not on any second-hand knowledge, but first-hand knowledge. It is clear that we're dealing with a question of a continuing threat, which is why we have to respond. And let me be very clear. I hold in my hands that unclassified transcript I beg to differ with my friends. Allow me just for a moment to tell you that in the call, President uh, Zelensky said these sentences. I would also like to thank you for your great support in the area of defense. We're trying to continue to cooperate for the next steps. Specifically, we also want to be ready to buy javelins. That's equipment, military equipment from the United States for defense purposes. Ukraine in the midst of a war against a nation that shot down at least some of those alleged to be separatists using Russian weapons, a commercial airliner. This is a serious war where our men and women with military in, in the military are on the ground trying to assist. And here's the very next sentence. The very next sentence is not, yes, let's get with the Department of Defense. Let's review your request. The very next sentence, I would like you to do a favor, though. This is a discussion about defense. The next sentence should have been, uh, I think we are well aware of your difficult predicament. I'm going to have you talk to the Secretary of Defense, but it said a couple of sentences later, I would like to have the Attorney General call you or your people, and I'd like you to get to the bottom of it investigation. So I would just um, offer to say uh, that uh, it is not frivolous and without facts that we proceed. We proceed with facts and we take this in a very somber manner. Would the gentlelady yield? I'd be happy to yield to the gentlelady for a moment. I, I would just like to note that when, while this aid was being withheld, um, people died. I'd like to ask unanimous consent to put into the record an article from the Los Angeles Times entitled, Trump froze military aid as Ukrainian soldiers perished in battle. Without objection. And note also that the highest death toll on any day in the Ukraine-Russian war was August 7th of this year, while aid was being uh, withheld. So this had life and death consequences, and I yield back to the gentleman. Very quickly.